right, everybody, how's it going? Can everyone hear my mic? Space, I appreciate that. Do me a favor if everyone can hear the mic right now, drop a one in the chat. <clears throat> All right, everyone. So Today we're just hanging out in the studio, kind of going through uh, some comments on the latest video. I was uh, not expecting it to kind of take off like it did on YouTube. For the past, I would say, month, I've been kind of having issues with YouTube, and I've kind of voiced that a little bit. Essentially what was going on was anytime I would upload a video, it would automatically get flagged on this section that you can see right here. Wasn't doing that on any of the other platforms. Wasn't doing it on Facebook, wasn't doing it on Patreon, but on YouTube, if I uploaded something, it would immediately flag it. And so it would have to go through a manual review. Now, YouTube has their policies and procedures on advertiser friendly guidelines and like what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, what is allowed, what isn't allowed, what's kind of gray area. And I've studied all of it. It's extensive, and so every time I would do a manual review, and every time the manual review would happen, they'd shoot it back to me, and they'd say, oh, hey, guess what? We looked into it, and yeah, you were right. Well, this is a consistent, like, permanent, well, not really permanent thing, because it's been fixed now, but it was very consistent. Um, it was every single time I would upload, I'd have to go through this process. That started back in January, and it was pretty much kind of hit and miss. It was like every other video I would upload, it would flag it, and then I'd have to go through the manual review process. But all last month, every time I uploaded something, it would just boom. So I was back and forth with chat, and oh, thank you. Sorry. Um, so I was back and forth with chat, and they were able to kind of like rectify the problem. They were able to fix it. So hopefully now this has all been fixed. This is the first video that I released since then. And as you can see, having to do like the manual review process really kills it. And so the key thing for me was trying to maintain some sort of like consistency where if a video was gonna be released, it was gonna be released at the same date, same time on both YouTube and Facebook. Uh, that way it's fair for both audiences. Cause I know those of you that are on YouTube, some of you guys don't wanna go over onto Facebook. That's understandable. Um, and then there's people on Facebook that don't want to go over to YouTube. And again, that's understandable. So I want to try and be as fair and consistent as possible with the release schedule, but it was making it very impossible. But luckily we were able to get that fixed. So back to what I was saying that I was not expecting this to take off like it did. Um, it was kind of shocking. I know when it f first got published, uh, cause I scheduled the release for like noon yesterday. Um, you know, in the first like 15 minutes, it was only like a couple hundred views. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's typical, it's whatever. But then once it got to the hour mark and I saw that there was like 5,000 views, I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so it was a little unexpected. So I'm kind of glad, but I kind of wanted to go through comments with you guys and we could all, I don't know, kind of have some fun with this. We can all kind of comment together. So. Um, any of these videos here, if you haven't seen them, we're going to be commenting on them. Um, just head on over to the channel on YouTube. You can just look them up. So, Anyway, how's your guys' day going? Absolutely. I will turn up the mic volume. The studio is a little bit noisy uh, because I've got a server in here. So I'm trying to kind of keep the mic down a little bit so it doesn't pick up the background noise. Hillsborough, can you send me an e All right, Jerry, can you hear me now? Uh, 
up the sensitivity on this mic. There we go. So many damn controls. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's nice having everything in one central location and on top of that you know I use audacity I can actually so the way I kind of do it is, is when I go to actually do any audio recording I'll allow like the first five seconds to just be whatever the background noise is and I found that if you do that you select those five seconds within audacity and then go up to the noise reduction select that five seconds use that as like the reference for it and then highlight the entire like segment of audio that you've recorded actually does a really good job of like clearing out all that noise yep servers they're fun they're loud <laughs> but they're necessary anyway guys so are you guys able to see this screen pretty well are you guys able to make out like what's being or the characters that are on the screen. Yeah, no, Aud Audacity is an amazing program. Uh, if need be, I can resize, I can make it a little bit bigger if that helps. How's that? Is that a little bit better? And it's probably going to be a little bit difficult if you're watching it on a phone. Um, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll name the person that commented, or the username that commented, and then we'll kind of go over the, or and then I'll repeat what they stated in their comment. So, all right. So, first comment we've got right now, or actually here. So I know... I've seen this before and I've wanted to address this. Um, so I've had people mention that, oh, I hide comments or I delete comments. I don't do any of that. YouTube, on the other hand, has this little section called held for review, where if their algorithm senses specific words or keywords that are used in a comment, it will automatically flag it, hold it for review, and then I have to go through and manually approve it. So we'll kind of go through this first. So we got Tudor Jason. Manuel should file a complaint with his state judicial misconduct board about the judge and file a lawsuit against the DA's office for violating Manuel's rights under the color of law. DA's and judges may have qualified immunity, but that stops if they misuse their authority to violate people's constitutional rights. And this was on the corrupt judging defense attorney video. This one was approved, but I guess somebody else had commented, and that's the one that's got to be manually approved. So, I don't delete comments. I don't block people. Um, this is where stuff ends up. And as you can see, YouTube kind of flagged it as likely spam. So now we're going to have to go through. So Walter Roche responded to Iver and said it's qualified, not absolute, as the judge is required, as in shall, to obey the state and federal judicial ethics and procedures guideline. Yes, they can decide things within the courtroom, but they're still required to follow very specific and exact procedures or else a mistrial can occur or their decisions be thrown out after which the defendant can file agreements with the state federal judiciary. So, yeah. I will say, actually, I take that back. I know I said I don't delete comments. If it's an obvious spam comment, um, I know, I want to say about a year ago, there were, like, bots that would comment, like, adult site links. Those, yeah, obviously I'm going to delete because that's spam. And that's more of, like, kind of an obligation on my end because if you were to, you know, unknowingly click on that link and it sends you and it does something malicious to whatever device it is that you're on, I'd feel bad about that, you know? So those kind of comments, yes, absolutely, I'll get rid of. But if it's somebody exercising their right to free speech, by all means, you know, I don't delete comments. People can hate all they want. I don't care. It is what it is. <laughs> so again, kind of the same video, corrupt judge and defense attorney. Uh, Andrew Bain said this action was quite clearly premeditated and it would or could not happen without the express help of corrupt judge. Um, again, his was approved, but this one's reply to it was considered spam. 
Uh, so it's obvious to all that it's the best, or that it is at best, gross corruption and abuse of powers. Approve. Obi Wan, uh, you're not getting my ID. It's another video I released a little while ago, and they said the appropriate reply to 90% of it. every question or comment a cop makes is, so what? Uh, his was fine, but YouTube flagged this response as likely spam. It's, or, quote, oh, didn't I tell you? So, boom, approved. All right, well, now we got all the hell for reviews out of the way. Let's get back to this. So, normally when you're on this section, so let's go here, subtitles, if I go here, um, there's usually a thing I have, I've got it removed right now, but it's a, it, it hides comments that I've already responded to. Sometimes you guys put something or we'll have a chat back and forth and I'll respond. And I won't see those ever again unless I specifically remove that filter. So I apologize if you've messaged me in the past and we were having a conversation and I never responded. <laughs> Hey, Wrights, how's it going, man? And Cap, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in, guys. So, we got Lenny Green. She says, All government law enforcement have completely lost all credi credibility with the people. You cannot trust them, period. And this was on the settlement one um, against Florida Police Department. This is a video that I did for Dr. Sean Barry on um, his arrest just outside of a elementary school in, I think it was Lake, Lady Lake? Yeah, I wanna say it was Lady Lake, Florida, um, where he was going there to report a crime that he had witnessed and instead got arrested for it. So, let's see. Oh. Yeah, I haven't streamed in a while, so I figured, you know what, like, got some stuff that I'm doing in the studio today, might as well. Um, let's see. I don't know. What do you guys think? Just a generic thumb and heart, or should we respond? And if so, what should we say in the response? I'm going to give you guys the power. Hey, Janet. Yeah, Hillsboro, I'm going to be a little bit busy tonight. Um, I've got some stuff that i got to take care of. Um, but yeah, just shoot me a text about it, and we'll, we'll try and get in touch. That it was, that it was. How's it going, Show Me State News? How's it going, No Comply? So what should we say in the response? There we go. And I've got it set now on my Streamlabs dashboard. I've got it set to multi-stream. So now I'm able to kind of see, because I'm streaming this both to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Um, but unfortunately, for a moment there, it was only showing YouTube comments. But I've got it set up for multi-streams. And I can see from both platforms what people are saying. So in fact, we're going to add, let's see. So I'm going to put this down here at the bottom. It's going to be 1 equals
there's that. So we're gonna make this really easy for everyone. We'll just move this right here. Now we're doing this in real time. All right, so like I said, so we're gonna go through each comment for a little bit. I'm gonna spend probably an hour on the stream. Hey Gary Pixley, how are you doing? So here's what we're gonna do. Like I said, we're just gonna, I'm gonna list off or read off what the comment is, who commented, what video it was on, and then you guys will leave a one in the chat if you just want me to like and heart it, two if you want me to do a custom response, and if you guys select two, then put what you would put in the chat and we'll kind of go over that. So. Let me know, guys, what do you think? Just the generic light and heart for, you know, put a one in the chat for just the generic light and heart. Uh, t put a two in the chat if you want me to do a custom response. Kevin Warner, like and heart. So on the next video, um, or the next comment, we've got the Sergeant Solomon video, which I just released yesterday. Uh, it's comments from Adun Wangan. It says, expose these lying tyrants. What do you guys think? I like viewer participation too. Hey, what's up, Cave Dub Cayman? And Janet, that is true. It is hard to trust anyone when they're constantly lying. One, boom. All right, so Ron Elitzer said, targeting out-of-state visitors so that they will have a problem going across the U.S. to appear to trial, an obvious revenue generation tactic for this athletic police department, or policeman. So this video is the officer charges woman without evidence. Um, I will state, I did have an opportunity to review. I know a couple people brought up that there was an alcohol container that was there. So, two things. One, yes, I made a mistake. Um, there were two bottles that were actually there. I thought there was just a one. Um, however, in fact, you know what? We're gonna actually go to it. So if you go, the entire month. let's see, hey so as he pulls up, let's see if we can't get it paused. So no the thing is, as you can see right here, they're in a koozie. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Yes, someone can sit here and say, oh, that's an alcohol container. However, they're both in koozies. This one doesn't have a label up at the top. This one has something, but it is kind of hard to see. Now, the way a defense attorney would look at this and be like, so how would you know without removing those koozies, how would you know without a reasonable doubt that that was in fact an alcoholic beverage container? You guys have heard of IBC, right? You know, Coke, Pepsi, they make glass bottles or they make glass bottle beverages. And that's kind of my, I'm not really trying to use it as a scapegoat. like. I didn't make a mistake. I did state that there was only one bottle and that you really couldn't see anything. But this is kind of where my thought process was. You know, just by looking at this koozie, can you tell that that's an alcoholic beverage? No. All you can see is it's a glass bottle. And that's kind of where my mindset was. Hey, Biden Crime Familia. Um, I see your comment do me a favor send me an email um i'm gonna actually i'll do that right now i'll post this up here at the top so
add a new source. Biden Crime Familia, do me a favor. I put this email, or I put my a list of my email up at the very top of the stream. So, yep. Send me a, uh, send me that link, and send me an email to that email address, and I'll take a look at it. Um, but back to what I was saying about this. So, again, kind of like devil's advocate here. Like, yeah, pretty much all you can see is that it's a glass bottle. You don't see any marks or descriptions that would indicate exactly what it is and that's the thing is law enforcement officers need to have like what's the word i'm looking for they need to be able to prove without a reasonable doubt that what that is is exactly what that is you know i've seen videos before where people will walk around with the little brown paper bags and they'll have like a can of arizona tea in it or they'll have like an ibc root beer and you can't really see what it is in the paper bag. You can just see the very top of it sticking out. And they'll do, they'll walk up in front of law enforcement officers and they'll drink from it. And then the officers will be like, oh, you know, you're drinking in public. Um, there was a guy I used to watch way back in the day, uh, back in high school, uh, Vitali. He used to do the same thing. In fact, actually there was a video where he was walking around with just giant glass bong, but he had tobacco in it. And he was smoking the tobacco out of the bong. And he was manhandled by these cops. And they were like, oh, you know, you're smoking, you know, you're smoking dope out in public and this and that. And it's like, mm, no, actually he wasn't. That was kind of the, the whole premise of the video was the fact that like, just because the glass apparatus has been used for drug paraphernalia doesn't mean that's exactly what it's being used for. So, I don't know. It's just my two cents on it. So we're gonna whoop, go back to this, close out of that, go back. Uh -oh. oh, we got another, <laughs> how do you know when a cop is lying, his lips are moving. That's a good one. There's another thing I've noticed too. Um, so remember earlier, we had liked these comments. No, it's unhighlighted them. It's doing a weird... It still shows that I liked it, but it does, like, some weird thing on it. So, next set of comments. Uh, targeting out-of-state visitors, blah, 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 blah. So, what do you guys think? Uh, John Nicola, no, I was kind of explaining a little bit about a video uh, that I released a little while back. Um, I'm trying to, rem I don't remember, off I want to say it was Panama. I want to say it was Panama City, Florida. But essentially, like, these cops rolled up on these two females because they saw two glass containers and koozies and then cited them with possession of alcohol on a beach. And apparently, not allowed to have alcohol on the beach. Um, so I was kind of just going over, I was essentially playing devil's advocate where it was like, yes, you know, obviously the law enforcement officer could see the glass container. However, there was nothing on the glass container that could prove without a reasonable doubt that it was alcohol. So, yeah, so, all right, now I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Put a one in the chat if you think I should just like and heart it. Too, if you want me to do a custom response, and if you want me to do a custom response, leave the custom response in the comment section of the chat and let me know. No, unfortunately, both um, both the females were consuming alcohol on the beach, um, and unfortunately, they talked and kind of blabbered their mouth and answered way too many questions. Cop was asking them all sorts of stuff like. 
oh, where do you work? Where do you live? Who's your boss? Who's this? Let me get this, you know? And it's just, let me get your phone number. And it's just like, duh, you, let me get your social security number. And it's like, mm -mm, no, you, you don't need to give all that. If you're being lawfully detained, especially here in the state of Florida, the only thing you need to do, um, this is according to Florida statute 901.151, you only have to give government issued ID if you're being lawfully detained. Now, here in Florida, you could give them your driver's license, a state ID. What I like to do is I like to hand them my concealed weapons permit because a concealed weapons permit only has your name. It only lists your name. It doesn't give any other information. The other thing too is the wording of Florida statute 901.151. You're only required to present your ID. Now, if we look up the definition of presenting, it means to show. That doesn't mean to give. To give and to show are two different things. So presenting an identification upon request of a law enforcement officer who has lawfully detained you, really all you have to do is just show the ID. And you've technically met the requirements and satisfied the requirements of the statute. So, yeah, John, no, I think he, think he definitely was. <laughs> All right, so got a number two. There we go. <laughs> the 790.25 section 3 subsection H. All right, so this other, so we got two comments from the same person on the same video. Um, and it's titled, Miami Supervisor Triggered Over Email Address. So in this incident, I was with Jay Surreal Camera, uh, Mass Accountability, and Ragamonkey. And we went to a Miami Schools Police Department, I believe it was their headquarters. Uh, Ragamonkey was waiting on some public records requests. And I guess they were kind of giving him issues. And he wanted us to go and kind of document with him. Um, so while we were there, uh, there was a lady that was at the front desk who wouldn't tell us what her name was, etc. So I said, okay, well, Florida Statute 119 allows me to verbalize a public records request. And, you know, they're, by law, they're not allowed to inhibit or delay a public records request, especially if it's something simple, where if it's something like, okay, well, I'm going to do public records request. I'm going to verbalize it. I'm going to ask you what your name is. I want you to provide your, your name. They're required by law to do so. And if they come up with any excuse as to why they can't, that's not legitimate. Such as, you know, if they're working in an under, you know, in an undercover capacity, that's one thing. You know, if you're out on the streets or if I'm out on the streets and I come across a, you know, a drug bust or something like that, where SWAT's raided a place and they've got their undercover detectives there or undercover agents, etc., those circumstances, absolutely. They can deny the request and not give up their name because it's not allowed. You know, it, it's protected. It's considered exempt under Florida Statute 119. But if you're just a regular clerk that works at the front desk of the headquarters, then you're required to provide that name under Florida law. Gator, shoot me an email address, or sorry, shoot me an email using the email address up at the top, um, and I'll talk, I'll, uh, we can kind of discuss something if you'd like. But Jay Dubell said in the first comment, well, you got a perfect lawsuit, what a dummy, I hope that you sued him and her. And then he also said, this is, a typ or, this is typical Miami BS, one of the reasons why I don't live down there anymore. You have the most corrupt BS a-holes. 
there's a little typo there. They, I, I'll think that they're in their own country, not the United States, and that's how they try to treat it. Miami is ruined from these very people. 100% I agree with that. Um, so I'll start off with the like and comment. So, should we just keep it at the like and comment, or should we respond to either of these? Um, I will state that he did say something about a lawsuit. Now, I actually did reach out to a public records attorney, and we were kind of talking about it. The unfortunate thing about filing lawsuits uh, with pertaining to public records or Florida Statute 119 violations is they cost a lot of money, and there's really no compensation for it. Like, you can get reimbursed from the state for your legal expenses. However, it's it's a process. Um, once I start getting a little bit more established, uh, I am going to actually start trying to kind of go after those. Um, that was originally my roots when I came back to doing this sort of stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys have been, or how many of you guys have been following me since about, I would say, five or six years ago when I originally started. It was actually under a different channel name. It was, originally the channel was called Southwest Florida Oath Accountability Project, and I'm not going to lie, it was a mouthful. Um, and I ended up stopping after a while. I got a little bit busy with life and just kind of, you know, hung the coat up and whatnot. I then came back. Uh, as open government investigations because I wanted to primarily focus on public records laws. Um, essentially, my whole goal with this was to, you know, try and promote transparency within the state of Florida. So, eventually I want to try and get back to my roots of really looking more into the, the public records aspect of things and trying to help educate more people on essentially what Florida Statute 119 allows us to do. So, we'll move on to the next. So, this next one is five officers investigated uh, Randy Cox incident. So, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Uh, I released this back in January, I believe. And essentially, it's a collection of body cam footage from an incident where a guy named Randy Cox was arrested. He was en route to the jail uh, the driver of the transport vehicle the law enforcement officer was the driver of the transport vehicle uh, was using his phone I guess not really paying attention to what was going on, on the road and had to slam on the brakes abruptly um, Randy Cox was not secured properly inside of the van uh, this was actually from the internal affairs investigation they found that he wasn't secured properly for transport on the way to the jail now the issue is when Randy Cox had, he, I, he went head first into like the, the metal separator in the back and it caused him to go paralyzed um, he was complaining that he was numb, he couldn't feel anything there was something wrong, there was something wrong well, throughout the entire incident and from multiple deputies with or multiple officers within this department they were mocking him they were tossing him around, tossing him around basically like a rag doll it was, it was quite disgusting um, but Gary or sorry Gail Drury said not caring for your fellow human or for fellow man becomes a way of life after a while and if everyone around you is the same and there is no one that says this is wrong nothing changes they also said so if we're on our cell phones and driving would be would we be arrested what's up so what's your guys thoughts about that you know I kind of touched on that for a moment but the, the guy who was driving the transport van was, you know, again, on his phone, distracted while driving. And I can't really see what was on the other side of the dash. Like I said, he came to an abrupt stop, causing Randy Cox to go face first into this, like, metal separator in the back of the van. And therefore paralyzing him. Richard, I appreciate that, man. And I agree. No. Transparency with records is vital. It is a very vital thing. So, and Kevin, yeah, no, they did. They they drug him. It was it was disgusting. It was a very disgusting video. Hey Tony, how's it going, man? 
Hey Tony, do me a favor. Um, I got my email address kind of listed up here at the top. Send me an email whenever you get a chance. Um, I'd like to talk to you about some stuff that's going on in Immokalee. Uh, Ryan DYC, yes, public record requests from law enforcement agencies are covered under the Freedom of Information Act. Um, and sorry, I'm, for some reason the multi-stream is now not showing all of the chats, so I'm kind of having to go back and forth between YouTube and multi-stream. So, this is a public service. Uh, do you think you're improving things? Um. That's a good question. I'm not 100% certain. Um, I think I brought awareness. I've definitely brought awareness. As far as changing things and improving things, that's, that is a very good question. Keto and Kratom agree. Love one another. We'll just do the generic likes. Oh, so I want to address the alligator situation. So in the Sergeant Solomon video, um, I make mention, let's see. It's right around here. This. So, yes, quick glance, it 100% does look like an alligator. It looks like that could be the snout, that could be the head, that could be the body, and along goes the tail. However, this was in fact a piece of tarp. So if you go, let's see, right here, kind of skip forward a little bit. Try and get this a little bit closer. So you can see right here where it says Carnival Gate. So in Collier County, this is along a Mockley Road just after where Oil Well Road splits off. And right over in that area, we have what's called the Collier County Fairgrounds. Um, I want to say it's at least 20 acres. Um, sorry, I'm drinking some water real quick. Throat's getting a little dry. So anyway, so they have events there um, fairly frequently, and I wouldn't say like every week, every day, um, but they do happen, uh, especially towards like the summer months. But essentially what this was, um, if we go back a little bit, at quick glance, yes, it could look like an alligator. However, after I had left, you know, the, the incident with, Sergeant Solomon over here. Um, it went back. Pull it up again. So I walked up over to it right here. It still hadn't moved. Um, you can kind of see right here where the grass is unobstructed. So what this is, is it's actually a piece of like plastic tarp, I guess is what you could call it. Um, and they'll use it to kind of you know, they'll lay it on the ground or they'll put like porta potties or they'll park things on top of it or they'll, you know, it, it's essentially, it's just used to kind of help protect the grass, keep the grass from dying. Um, but that's essentially all it is. It's just debris. Um, and, you know, that definitely reaffirms it because as you can see in this section, you know, he, he had backed up to it. He's looking at it. Realizes, okay, no, it's not a gator and then continues moving. Hey, Lenny. Gator, yeah, when, I, when I'm done with the stream, I'll probably stop the stream around 4.30. Um, but when I'm done with the stream, I'll, I'll check it out. That's another thing, too, is, yeah, sometimes they'll use it to kind of cover gates. But anyway. Oops. Bringing up this. Don't want 
like that. But a lot of these I've, or I went through and I kind of filtered out so you can kind of come up here and I can, you know, gator. And pretty much anyone that was talking about a gator, I went through and just kind of gave them a generic, you know, response of like, you know, I can understand why it would look like a gator. However, it's not. So. There we go. <laughs> So Sitsi of Vic 10 minutes ago said, how many water molecules are in the ocean? How many stars are in the sky? And that's how many lies can come from a cup. In fact, here, for the time being, I haven't responded. So that way we can kind of clear out some of these. All right, so Joseph Murphy said, all police officers lie to their benefit, at least most of them, and I would say about 40 to 50 percent are sociopaths, just from what I've seen, uh, and that was on the settlement one against Florida police. So do, uh, Jay Johnson said, too many commercials, going to stop watching. Um, so this one, I'm going to actually kind of take the, the reins on this one. So, Jay Johnson said, too many commercials, going to stop watching. My response was, unfortunately, YouTube's the one that decides how many ads will be played on a video. I've seen that recently they've been increasing the number of ads that are displayed during an ad stop. So, I'll kind of show you guys something real quick. So, if I go to content, if I click on this, um, let's say like with this video. Let's see if I can see monetization manage mid rolls so youtube will automatically place these are called stops or ad breaks um and it even says so if you choose to manually place your ad breaks why placing breaks to disruptive points and note that ad breaks don't guarantee ads will appear for every viewer so with these little sections see i can like go here and i can place an ad break there now just because i place an ad break there does not mean that you as the viewer would actually get an ad at that location um what that also means is that it may show you know if you do happen to get to that point in the video and an ad does show you may get one ad or as i've been seeing recently um youtube's have been stacking ads on specific breaks so well this card changes so but no lenny i i I get it. <laughs> oh, they get rid of Cash App in the UK? Um, and there should be a link in the description. Um, I know that... I don't know. I copied over the description from my... Or the default description for my videos over into the live stream. Maybe it didn't work, but let's see. Edit title. Yeah, it should be in there. If not, um, then it's no big deal. Um, let me try and do this then. Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. No, what the hell is it? Oh, wait, I'm pressing the wrong button. That's why. Derp. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Alright, Lenny, I'm going to drop a comment into the chat, and then I'll pin it for you. There we go. And that's got both PayPal and Cash App. And again, you guys do not have to donate. You guys do not. I, I do not expect donations at all. Hey, Brandon. Welcome, and thank you so much for supporting the channel, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lenny. I appreciate it. Um, I know I said I was going to cut it at 4.30, so it gives us about 16 minutes. So I'll do another, let's see, I'll, yeah, I'll do another six minutes of the comments, but then I'll kind of give you guys a little sneak peek of another thing that I was trying to do. Let's see. Trying to decide which one I kind of want to go over. Yeah, we'll do this one. We'll definitely do this one. All right, so. source, add new source, we'll call it sneak peek. Lenny! <laughs> um, so, very interesting you ask, uh, Ryan DYC. Um, Marco's interesting. Um, I've only gone there a couple of times. And it's been kind of hit or miss. Some of them are kind of cool. Some of them are kind of douchebags. Um, I know when I first started, and this is back when I was, you know, Southwest Florida Oath Accountability Project, uh, Lackluster actually found my channel because of an audit that I did involving the Marco Island Police Department, where it ended up being a flashlight war. Um, so this guy was just parked in the median, no lights, no nothing. It was running traffic, and there were cars coming by. So I decided to use my little dinky little flashlight. It was only like 300 lumens, so it's like barely bright, to warn other drivers that, hey, there's a cop just chilling here in the median. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so I used my flashlight to kind of shine the light towards the, the cop that was sitting in the median. And, you know, it was like waving drivers down. He did not like that. Um, so <laughs> he comes around the corner. He basically makes a U-turn, starts kind of heading back towards my direction, and goes to use his spotlight. Well, what he didn't know was that I also had a really big boy flashlight. Um, it was like 1,300 lumens, which, I mean, it's not really... I mean, I've got much more powerful flashlights and that but you know 1200 lumens is is pretty decent so he comes pulling up and he hits me with his spotlight and i beamed him back with my light and he definitely did not like that so i've had i've had some fun with marco um i did have an incident where i came to kind of talk um i wanted to kind of test their ability to kind of see and kind of gauge like what kind of like if there would be any kind of retaliation for kind of going to the department so long story short i went there at like two o'clock at night um was sitting in the parking lot waited waited until you know one of the deputies or officers had shown up to the their headquarters 
waiting for him to go inside. I walked up. Um, guy came out. It was cordial. He was nice. He asked if I needed anything. And I said, yeah, you know, it was just out of curiosity. Can I get a complaint for him? And he was like, oh, yeah. And he's like, well, I'm a supervisor. You know, if you want to talk to me about it, you know, we can, you know, I can still get you the complaint form. And then you, you fill it out and we can kind of discuss what happened. And I was like, no, it's okay. You know, I just, I just want the complaint form so that I can, you know, put it in. You know, he'd ask me, like, oh, you know, what's your name? And I was like, no, I'm not going to give my name. For the most part, the supervisor was pretty cool. Uh, what I didn't know was that there was an unmarked car that it was sitting across the street at the hospital that they have there. Uh, it's a small little clinic. I didn't realize, but the guy was essentially kind of watching me the whole time from across the street. So after I finished up with the supervisor, he, you know, he went upstairs. Um, he actually ended up coming back out and saying, hey, listen, you know, I actually don't have any printed out, but I'm printing out some new ones so you can have a couple. You know, he's like, I'll be right back. So again, very cordial, very professional from the supervisor comes back out hands me the complaint forms i start walking back to my car i wait for him to leave you know he leaves i get in my car and as i'm getting in my car and going to leave uh the unmarked it was a dodge charger comes flying around the corner and starts trying to chase me down well unfortunately for him uh i've got an extensive extensive amount of driving training um so I took him on a little ride and got it to the point where he thought he was going to get directly behind me and I real quick backed into a spot to where he couldn't catch my tag because I know it's exactly what he was trying to get the tag because he wanted to know who I was. Um, he wasn't prepared for that. I ended up playing cat and mouse with him and you know he took off. Obviously, I'm not going to speed on public roads, but he was definitely speeding. Uh, for those of you that have not been to Marco Island, about the fastest you can go is about 35 miles an hour. Um, speed limits are 30, you can do five over. Uh, there's a few spots where it is 35 and you can kind of do 40, but the particular area we were at was 30 miles an hour and he was pushing 50, 60, and you could hear he was romping on it. But yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna do that. And uh, yeah, so it's been kind of hit or miss to answer your question. Add file. We're gonna go to this rendering. Is it thirty? Yeah, we want thirty eighty one. I oh, know it's not giving me any controls. Oh no, I know how I'm gonna do this. I know how I gotta do this. Give me one second. So, we got nine minutes left, which is kind of perfect because the sneak peek that I'm gonna show you is about seven minutes long. And we are going to do add source. That was on the main road, uh, you know, or Collier Boulevard. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the area, but if you go Collier Boulevard, you go over the the Judge, whoever bridge that goes, like the main bridge that goes into Marco. Yeah, no, um, oh, if you're Ryan DYC, are you asking me about the incident with the flashlights or are you asking me about the charger that was trying to play cat and mouse? unmarked uh so that was right where their headquarters is um in fact if i go here let me right, let's exit out of this so beep, 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 beep. let me pull this up over here real quick So it's on 
So right here is where the mark go. Oh wait. It would help if I put this back. There we go. So. This is the Marco Island Police Department. So their headquarters right here. I was parked, let's switch this over to satellite view. So I parked my car over here. I didn't realize he was parked over here where the NCH uh, clinic was. He had his car parked over here in the shadows. And I guess what he was doing was he was catching people coming this way or this way, blowing through the red light or speeding, etc. cetera. Um, and anyway, so I had walked all the way over here and I got back to my car. You know, I was like walking this way. Supervisor left, he went out this end. I started walking this way. Supervisor went up that way. So I came walking over, got in my car, and I proceeded to come out this way because I was going to come this way and, you know, leave the island. Well, he came over this way and got behind me. I was about right here, and I'd, I noticed it because... So when they go after you, you can definitely tell when it's a cop's coming after you because obviously high rate of speed and they'll come flying up. So he came flying up this way and I noticed it when I was about right here. I'd seen him pull out and gun it. Um, so I took him on a little joy ride through here. I real quick went down Bayport, came down, I believe it was Bermuda, it was either Bermuda or Kirkwood. It wasn't Tahiti, but it came up this way I was about right here when he was coming around the corner and he started gunning it again down the street. So I pulled up over on, yeah, I went down this way, came over here and then pulled this way and then real quick backed into the driveway. And as I was backing into the driveway, he was coming around this way and he kind of stopped right in front of me for a minute and was looking and then he guns it. I came out and then he came out this way and he booked it this way and yeah I was not gonna I was not gonna fly down the road so huh interesting Lenny um um that is a hmm I can check that real quick if you want let's Details of the go. Huh, no, it's working for me. Let me try dropping it just by itself without any. In fact, actually, you know what? I'll do you one better. Let me double check it on this real quick. Canceled, copy. Try that link, Lenny, and tell me if that works. No, this is public service. No, I wasn't fleeing and eluding. I wasn't fleeing and eluding anything. Um, what happened was, so cops here in Florida like to be retaliatory. Uh, so whenever you try and be anonymous and file a complaint, and you go in anonymously, anonymously and say they don't know who you are because you've never been there and they've never seen you around, um, what they'll do is they'll try and tail you. So most people, when they do this, um, won't really recognize that you know they're being followed some will some won't so what had happened was i noticed that i was being tailed because i saw the way that the guy came out of the parking lot and i recognized the car and i'm like nope that's a cop and so 
I made a turn down the road. So it wasn't necessarily fleeing and eluding. Fleeing and eluding would be if I had committed a crime and tried getting away. The problem that he would have had trying to prove fleeing and eluding was the fact that I hadn't committed a crime. But I get what you're saying. <laughs> um, and Ryan, yeah, let me see if I can find it. If I go here. Um. So the video. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, quick video. There's an old video in. There we go. Yeah, alright. So, let me try and get this working real quick so we can get the stream going real fast. Or get the stream finished. I'm trying to get this. Let's see. So if I do this, it's been a minute since I've toyed around with Streamlabs, so give me just a second, guys. One of them just said goodbye. Still not let me do it. Uh, I just want to show you guys this video thing real quick. <laughs> it is being a pain in the ass. If I do, video capture. Maybe if I do display capture, how about that? display capture there we go all right so we're gonna start this I want to see if it uh so this is part of a series with a couple of deputies. Um, so I know if you guys have checked on the community posts that I did uh, the other day where it kind of showed a couple of different videos uh, before I put out the poll. One of them was Kari County Deputy almost rear ends me. So this is after that incident. Um, so after the lady almost rear ends me, you know, I went to kind of go and identify who the deputy was. Uh, but they went and hid in a restricted area, and then I kind of waited down the road for them, saw them leave, and then they ended up coming here to the Bureau of Emergency Services. So they had parked. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, but they are they parked right over here, and they were kind of hanging out in their car. So I kind of snuck over. They don't know them, but they can walk over here. But anyway, so I go trekking through the woods. Got one more sec. County. What's up, coward? Hey, I remember you from Lee County. I remember you. What's your name and badge number? Sorry, what was that? Why don't you come and actually say that so I can hear it instead of walking away? You're supposed to do it professionally and courteously. You, number 983, what's your name and badge number? 
You heard me. What's your name and badge number? Can I get your name and badge number, sir? Yes. Uh, so that I can hear it. I'm kind of hard of hearing. Name, rank, and ID. Bogart? Yeah, right. okay. Sergeant. Sergeant, thank you. ID is 2179. Thank you so much. Can you have her come back and identify herself per your guys' policy? That it's is... O dash or P-2.14. Yeah, she, I, she gave it to you. I didn't hear what she said. It's Gutierrez. Cool. Can she come back and do it like she's required to per her policy? And can I also get that guy's name and badge number? Because he almost rear-ended me and I... So... Um, it's not, it's not a Have guy. it on camera, because he wasn't paying attention. I didn't know that. Hey, uh... Sergeant Bogart... Marcioni! 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 Hey! That's cool, they're ignoring you. <laughs> not for long. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll stop that there. Um, kind of give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of what's going on. Um, yeah. So, go ahead and we'll move that. We'll go back to this. So, anyway, guys, it is now 4.35. I got some stuff I got to get taken care of. Um, but I appreciate you guys hopping in on the stream with me. Um, if you haven't, go ahead and check out the latest video that I put out. Um, it's this one right here. If I go to content. It's this one right here, the Sergeant Solomon Lyser's teeth video. Um, if you also haven't had a chance, um, if you're on YouTube watching this, if you want to head on over to Facebook, um, let me pull that up for you. Head on over here. Um, Go to the channel. Got it up on Facebook as well. It's Open Government Investigations News Network. Um, oh, look, you can see I'm streaming it right now. <laughs> so, anywho. Whoa, that's weird. I didn't, I did not put that there. I'm not to look into that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I released the stuff that I put on YouTube uh, on here as well. Um, however, for some reason, Facebook seems to not ever have an issue with my uploads. But YouTube, like I said, used to have those issues. But I think we've resolved that issue with YouTube. So hopefully, I'm going to start being able to, let's see. Todd, no, you're 100% truth. 100% truth right there. Uh, let's see. And then uh, Biden Crime Familia. Yeah, just send me the Google Drive link. Um, I'll check out the emails once I'm done here with this stream, which should be here in a few minutes, and I'll shoot you an email back. Um, but anyway, yeah, so head on over. Facebook. If you guys use Facebook, if not, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in, and I will see you guys later. Stay safe, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs>